Burke. Okay, yes, microphone checks. Um, welcome, everyone. I hope lunch was great. My lunch was great, um, even though sitting at the vegetarian table was a bit awkward. Um, nonetheless, uh, we're here to talk about um, making a game in Rust. Um, uh, I don't have a lot of time, um, so I'm going to make everything like quite short, and, but try not to race through it. Um, so I'm Liz, or Lisa, or Liz Liz. Um, and I think I'm the only speaker whose handle is on the schedule and not like real name, um, but that's fine. Uh, I work at Travis CI and we do continuous integration. I dropped a bunch of stickers and I think there's still some left. Um, yeah, but my day job mostly consists of front end work, so JavaScript in the browser and pushing pixels. I actually like CSS, believe me, I do. Um, nonetheless, um, I have a different hobby and that is everything about video games, playing, and for this talk, more importantly, um, making video games. So you might wonder, why are making video games? Like, web programming is awesome. Like, do this as a hobby. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is like, making games can be seen as like an like art of like artistic expression. Like, some people make songs on like as a hobby, or they paint. Um, and you can also make like weird little video games about experiences or like feelings. And there's this whole niche on the internet um, where people do these kinds of things. Um, also, I think there that games are programmatically quite challenging because they're so different from web programming. So there's like a couple things that you need to consider that just like don't appear in my day job, which is I find like this is something that's really interesting. Um, and also on the challenging part of side, it's like it's not just like the logic of the game that you need to take care of, there's also like graphics and there might be sound and hopefully there's sound. Um, and like interaction, but not just like interaction player with like your game software, but this could also mean um, interaction with hardware, like do you use a keyboard or I have made a game that uses a, um, a MIDI keyboard, so like an actual like piano-like keyboard as an input device and like all these kinds of things um, that you can like be creative about and can like toy around with. Um, so everything is basically about fun and learning stuff. So now we know why we should make a game. Um, why would you want to use Rust for it? Um, so generally, if like people want to say to me like, "Oh, like I want to make games. Like, what language should I tr uh, should I write them in?" Um, I usually say like, for the scope of like an indie game, any language would do. Um, I've made games in Lua and Ruby and JavaScript and Clojure, and it's all fine. Like because until like speed and like all these things actually matter, like you don't have the time to build a game that is that complex, um, that you actually care about these things. Um, that being said, like the big titles that you play on PlayStation or on your Xbox or PC or whatever, um, they're usually coded in C and C++, where the engineers try to like, get every computation out of every clock cycle, and it's like very, very um, low level and like, hard on the, on the actual hardware of the system. Um, well, also Rust is a system level language, so it's like, oh, we could actually like, think about making big titles um, in Rust. Um, also, Rust is new and shiny, and I always try to like, learn things, um, and this was like, the perfect opportunity to like, get into Rust. It's like, okay, I can make a game in it. Um, and here's a brief intermission, uh, because like, I started researching like, how to make games like, a few years ago, and every book I ever read on it had code examples in C++. And while it was fine, like reading the book and then like reading the narrative to like the code, it's like, yeah, I can sort of follow it. I was like, I cannot, I cannot code this on my own. Um, so I like, years ago, I tried learning C++, like the hard way. Um, there's a series about it, but it was actually hard. Um, <laughs> um, this was mostly because like uh, every time I was stuck and like didn't understand something, I asked like programmers that I know from like various communities, like I have this problem in C++. You studied computer science, like you sure know how to solve this. And they were like, uh, don't you want to like try Ruby maybe? Like I can explain you Ruby. I was like, no, but like I need help in C++. I was like, uh, no. So I, I stopped um, and never learned C++. So this is the sad story. Um, Positive story is back to the why use Rust. People are excited about it. And like, if I tell people, oh, like I'm trying to make a game in Rust, they're like, awesome, tell me all about it. It's like, I actually don't know what I'm doing, but I can tell you about it. Um, and this is part of like the welcoming uh, community that you are. Um, and we've like heard it a couple of times during the day. This is not like a given for other communities. And um, I think it's really exciting. This is like probably what will make me stick around in the Rust community. Um, so all this aside, uh, let's actually make a game. 
Um, to make a game, uh, you usually need three things. Um, you want to use an engine, because if you don't use an engine and you start making a great game from scratch, you will end up making a game engine. Um, people are laughing, it's like, it's like yeah. <laughs> um, so if you want to make a game, you pick an engine, probably. Um, you, you might want to have an idea what the game is about. Um, could be anything. Um, and then you need time to make it, because making games is um, quite the time consumer. Um, I like to do games at Game Jam, so it's just like focused like one or two days, and then like done, never touch it again, but you learn a lot still. Um, okay, picking an engine. Um, there's this very cool site that I found, uh, which is called arewegameyet.com, which lists um, yeah, game-related resources in the Rust ecosystem, so crates that you might want to use, lists of games that are already out there. It's like, perfect, this is just what I need. Uh, so I went to the list of game engines, and I picked the first one, Piston, um, which, like, for some reasons, it seemed kind of cool. It's for the short lifetime of Rust itself, Piston has been around for quite a long time, and it's still very actively like, maintained and developed, and I'm just like, oh, this is a good indicator. Um, I like, like the modularity approach, so it says like, we have a couple of um, like, small focus crates that you can use and then like, plug your engine together, so there's like, modules that you can use for 3D stuff, but I will focus on the 2D thing. It's like, oh, but this is cool, so in case I end up learning 3D modeling at some point, I could still use the same engine. Um, there's already like a few games uh, listed on the, um, on the wiki that use Piston. Um, most of them are Snake or Tetris, but that's, those are still valid games, and there's a couple of like new ones, so there's like some, cold, uh, some code in the wild that I could take a look at. Um, the documentation could be better. There's sort of like generated docs, but as a beginner, I was like, I don't really... Like, the list of traits that this thing implements doesn't really tell me anything because I was too lazy to read to the point in the book where it's about traits, so I don't know. Um, but that's okay, because I, I could fumble my way through it um, with the example games and saying, like, oh, so how do they use it? Ah, oh, this way, so um, you'll be fine. Um, honorable mention for an engine called GGEZ, Good Games Easy, I think, is what it stands for, um, because they describe, like, their... their mission or their design inspiration was Love2D, which is a very popular 2D game engine in Lua. So every game engine that tries to be like Love2D is probably on a very good way, and I will probably try it next um, for the next game. OK, we have our engine. Uh, now we need to get an idea. Uh, and this, like, as I already said, it could be about anything you want, uh, an experience, just I make games about a joke that I heard, and like it could be anything. So the game that I made for this um, talk is called Manzana Attack. Manzana is Spanish for apple, um, and it's based on a true story, which I'm going to tell you, otherwise you won't really get the game. Um, I was in Spain a few months ago with my partner, and we were visiting like a colleague of mine who's based in, in Madrid in Spain, and we were out like having a beer, sitting outside a bar, and just like chatting when all of a sudden an, an apple came falling down and crashed into my coworker's backpack and made this like psh sound and like pieces of apple like flying everywhere and we're like, whoa, what is happening? And it was just like one apple and then it was silent and we were like, where did that come from? Looking up, no tree. <laughs> like, like the next tree was like 10 meters away and was an olive tree. I was like, what? And we like looked up at the building. It's like, did someone just throw an apple out of the window with like not caring at all for like what happens. It was like just, it wasn't just like you know a piece of an apple. It was like an entire apple. We like looked at the scraps. It was like what, and it was very surreal. And um, the next day, I was like, oh, I should probably make a game out of this because it was so weird. Um, so I went back to um, the house or the bar where this happened and took a picture, which is like um, in the game, which I'm gonna demo right now, which hopefully works. So I'm gonna. No, nope. I um, probably need to do this. And this. Oh, you can see this. Oh, this is actually huge in this resolution. And, okay. So, despite the fact that the, um, uh, the contrast isn't very good. So, it says Manzana Tech. It's like a little window, um, 500 by 700 pixels. It says WASD to move and M to throw. M for Manzana, obviously. 
and also M to start. So what you see is um, the house where this actually happened. Um, it happens that the windows of the house make this nice three by four grid in which uh, me, the player, uh, represented by the black square, is moving around. Um, you see down at the floor there's red rectangles um, walking from right to left, left to right, um, at various speeds, so um, I can move around, and when I press M, I throw an apple. <laughs> ah, damn it. And so like, your, your game is to like, time these and like, actually hit the people. You see at the top that um, you have a meter of 10 apples, and um, if you throw an apple, like, those decreases, and then you get a score if you actually hit. Um, right now, you always get 20 points, which is very random because I couldn't decide on like, a proper logic for scoring. Um, so I'm going to play this real quick and just like, hope that I get a lot of... Uh, no, okay. When I'm out of apples, um, or like the last apple hits the bottom, or um, a person at the bottom, um, I get the ending screen, so I'm out of apples. I had a score of, I can't really read it, 80, I think. Um, and then press escape to leave, which I'm going to do, and this is the game. Um, yay! <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's quickly run through how would you build such a thing. Um, so here's an ingredients list, also known as cargo Tamil. Um, and I have only three dependencies, which are piston window, find folder for like finding assets, and random for all things randomness. And um, you might wonder, wait, only piston window? Didn't you talk about like modularity and crates and stuff? Um, piston window is a convenience wrapper that like when you're starting, you don't have like, you have no choice like what crate or like what backend for Windows do you want to use? Like I don't know. So piston window is there to like give you like a nice choice of things that you probably want to use, um, which I use. But it's just like nice, it's this um, nice trade of like okay, they made some choices for me because as a complete beginner, I don't know. Um, so in later games, you can like start using like the core piston engine and then put stuff together as you go. Um, okay, let's quickly talk about some other um, game fundamentals. Um, a game usually consists of like four, four main parts um, that you need to consider. Uh, one of them is load, uh, which is like initializing your window, loading all the assets and all that stuff. Um, then you have update and render, which are in most engines, the like callbacks or events that happen um, 60 times a second. So in render, you just like draw stuff. And because it happens so fast, that our, the human eye cannot see that you're like redrawing this very fast. You see this movement because like values slowly change. And um, the change of values is usually computed in the update cycle, which also happens 60 times a second, hopefully. Um, what makes this thing interesting, so all of this would make super awesome generative art. Um, the things that makes it a game is like events or inputs where we interact with the game. So like um, in my game, like I move around the player and press M to throw up um, the apple. So let's look at some code. Um, this is a boiled down version of my um, main RS, which is say like extern create piston and use piston window everything. Um, there's also like in, in the code on GitHub, you can see that um, there's also like the random crate and then find folder, but this doesn't matter right now. And um, in the main function, uh, what we need to do is specify a version of OpenGL, then create a piston, like a, a window, uh, which, is of t which is of type piston window, and like given some settings, like the title of the window, the width and height that we want. If we give the version of OpenGL, we say, um, if we want to exit on escape, we can say true, which is what I used, and then build and then unwrap, and then you have like our piston window for the game. And the, the actual nice thing um, happens next, um, which is a while loop um, that iterates over all the events that the window throws at us. So the piston window will give us all the events that happen, and then we have like a match statement um, where we like sort these events. Okay, is this an update event? Then do this. Um, or like, is it a render event or is it a release event? Um, in my game, I only use release events because that's worked for me, but you can also use like key um, press events or mouse button click events or scrolling or just mouse movement and um, all the things are supported, um, but I just need these. And the rest of them like happens basically inside of these event hooks, I would call them maybe. Um, so far so good. Uh, let's take a look at the structure. 
Um, I made a couple of structs. Most of them are just there to keep track of the positioning within the game, so just like absolute pixel values. Uh, so I have a main game struct that um, I should probably say that um, folk or the folks in the game are the red squares or the people that walk around the street. So the game main game struct keeps track of uh, or like contains a vector of folks or of a folks vector of folk of type folk um, and the player and the player then has shots and apples. Shots are, was the indicator that was at the top that tells you oh you have like ten apples and now we have and if you throw an apple you have nine left and then you have eight left and keeps track of this. And like apple structs are just like the literal apples that fall down the, the house and then maybe hit people. Um, yeah, so that's like the that's like the types of structs that I created. Um, this is a quick walkthrough because I'm thinking I'm already like hard on the time limit. Um, as I said uh, in the loading, we like initialize the video, um, uh, initialize the window the game and load all the assets. Assets could be like all the image files, the fonts, and all that kind of stuff. Um, render is just literally uh, iterate over every vector and like draw all the information that we have in form of either images or like squares um, or like points in the score uh, where we type text. Um, events is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, like I use release. Um, so we check if like we get um, Piston receives like events for every button that is pressed, and I just like match it. It's like if this is actually um, um, the key M, like then only then call the throw. And um, on the player struct, I have a throw method that there's some code that um, calculates the new position of the apple that is going to be thrown, and then we call it just like self shots dot fire, which is like on the shot struct or like on the shots thing. Um, decreases the counter and in the apple vector, I just like push a new apple that will then be updated by the update loop. But we go to that in one in a second. So this is like actually really simple code. Um, uh, in the update, this is where most of the magic happens um, because we update all the things. Um, on the apple struct, so every apple runs its own update and I'm checking for if the apple itself is active. And then I'm gonna just decrease the value of like the y-axis, which is the one that um, the horizontal, the vertical one, and we start zero at the top, and it grows when you go towards the bottom. Um, so like on every update, I'm just gonna like increase this by one, which is kind of random, but it works. And then I'm gonna check if the the value exceeds a certain amount, which is like towards the bottom. Then I'm gonna kind of deactivate the apple um, and set it to false. Um, so then like the apple is inactive. So. Um, a similar thing happens when I update the folks that run around the street. Uh, I'm also gonna like check if the folk is still active. Um, and then I have a property on them which is called LTR, so left to right, which is either true or false. So um, when they come from the right side or from the left side, um, it differs whether I need to increase or decrease the value on the x, x axis. Um, and also depending on that, um, I have a condition for when to like deactivate them, like when they walk out of the, the screen, basically. Um, yeah, I also have a time like a time mechanic for spawning new folks, um, which is right now uh, directly in the game structs update uh, method, which would probably go to like a folk controller abstraction thing. Um, but it was so small that I just put it in there. Um, which is like just the counter that takes the delta time, and delta time is the time between two calls of like the update function. So this is like somewhere in the milliseconds like sphere, um, and I just like call up all the milliseconds, and um, if the counter is like greater than some interval that I chose, for example, I think it's two seconds. So in the game, every two seconds, a new person is spawned somewhere. Um, like if we actually like if the two seconds are exceeded. Um, I'm going to reset the counter so it can like um, start from zero in the next in the next round. But I'm also going to call self um, spawn folk, so like a new folk is pushed into the into the game's folks vector. Um, and, and like the spawn method itself, like this does all the the random stuff. So, like choose a random direction, like either go from left to right, and like um, what speed um, you should walk at because the speed is also varying a bit. Uh, what's also happening on every update loop is checking for collision, which is this very verbose code of two nested for loops. Um, I'm iterating over all folks, um, check if 
like they're still active, and then I'm going to iterate over all the apples and check if the apple is, stay active, uh, is still active. And then there's like um, collision detection of like two rectangles, which is very nice if you just use rectangles because the geometry for overlapping rectangles with um, where the axes are aligned in the same way is fairly trivial. It just takes like uh, so this width like greater than the other width, and then uh, it's just like four lines in this if statement. Um, and if those match, so if the rectangles actually overlap, I'm going to deactivate um, both the folk and the apple, which is also like setting the active flag to false. And then this is also where the scoring should happen, ideally, but yeah, scoring is a different thing. Um, there's some couple of things that I do not like about this game at the moment. They are missing. Um, I had sound effects. I, I already picked the sound effects there in the Git repo, um, but I couldn't make the create ears to work. So ears is just the create with like a little like load some sound asset and then play it, um, but it didn't work. I'm blaming, I, I tried to install Super Collider on my computer, which is like this gigantic music library, and it didn't work at all, and I'm blaming this for that, so I'm not sure if this ever works. Um, I really want a sophisticated scoring logic based on uh, um, the height of the apple and where you've, um, from where you drop it, um, and the speed of the folk that you actually hit. So if you have an apple that you throw from higher up the building and accidentally hit like a very fast moving folk at the bottom, you should get more points. Um, also like encourage moving around a lot. Um, and I want some logic to prevent window squatting. I had some people play the game and they would just like sit in a window where they like felt comfortable like gauging the, the, um, the falling of the apple. It's like, okay, if I like now release the apple, then it's like probably that will hit this person, but I don't want this, you should move around a lot. Um, so I thought about maybe having something that's like opening and closing windows, and you can only use the windows that are open at the current point in time and not when they're closed, but this is all future. Um, and that's how I made a game in Rust. Um, it was quite hard. I, I ran into all the things that like beginners probably run into is like, iterate over something while it needs to be mutable. So like I found iter mute. Um, strings are like every like everywhere would I would use strings in a different language, I used numbers instead here or like integers because it's like ah oh, it's so hard. I can't I can't figure it out. Um, but it worked in the end and I'm with all the talks that I've listened to today, I'm like I should really like learn about traits and stuff because <laughs> it seems like exactly the thing that I need. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and um, I can encourage you to do this. Um, yeah, thank you.